today's video we're going to take a look at a KMZ start camera made in the USSR in 1961 and then we'll make an adapter to fit the lens to a micro four thirds camera. The camera came complete with its original leather case which I'll just remove so we can have a look around the camera itself. I will eventually use film in this camera but there's a problem with the shutter mechanism at the moment which I'll need to fix before I can use it. The lens is an early Helios 44 with 13 aperture blades, which should give some pretty good results and I'm looking forward to trying it out. The camera was made by KMZ, or Krasnogorsky Magnitsky Zavod for short. I'm sure I've still pronounced that incorrectly, but if I keep trying I'm bound to get it right sooner or later. The Cyrillic script on the front here translates to the start model name of the camera. The start was relatively advanced for the time, with shutter speeds going all the way up to one thousandth of a second, and a removable prism that could be swapped out for a waist level viewfinder if you preferred. Setting the shutter speed is very much like you do on a Zorki. You advance the film first, and then set the shutter speed dial. The dial shouldn't be forced, and you shouldn't attempt to set it before advancing the film, otherwise you can damage the mechanism. The shutter release button is this big protrusion to the side of the lens, and you'll notice as I press it that it automatically closes the aperture to the stop set on the aperture ring at the back of the lens. Once the photo is taken, the mirror remains in the up position against the prism, so you can't see through the viewfinder until you advance the film again, like this. You can also preview the aperture by rotating the shutter release button, which locks the aperture at the preset stop until you rotate the button again. This will definitely come in handy when using the lens on a modern digital camera. When I bought this camera on eBay, it was described as fully serviced and tested. It also said it works correctly on all speeds. So let's have a look at that then. If I trigger the shutter at 125th of a second, it looks about right. But now if I advance the film again and set it to 160th of a second and trigger the shutter, you can see that the second curtain is very slow and it doesn't actually close fully. That issue is consistent every time 160th of a second is selected. So now if I wind it on again and set it to half a second and trigger the shutter, it doesn't look too bad. But if I keep shooting at half a second, you'll suddenly see that it's considerably faster than half a second exposure, like on that one. These issues are present throughout the slower shutter speeds, and it's likely to be a problem with the clockwork slow speed delay mechanism. I'll need to strip the camera down at some point in time and fix that. Although the camera wasn't in quite as good condition as I expected, I still wanted one, so I decided to keep it and repair it properly myself. The lens mounting system on the start is a bit unusual. It uses a breech lock bayonet, and to remove the lens you rotate this ring on the body of the camera, and then the lens simply pulls off without having to rotate the lens itself. There don't appear to be many commercially available adapters available for this lens, so I had to make my own. It involved a bit of this. I didn't actually do the CAD design myself because my brother offered to do it for me. And then once the adapter was designed, it involved a bit of this. The adapter was 3D printed using standard PLA filament on an FLSUN Delta printer. And then, after a bit of tidying, we ended up with this. There's a micro four thirds bayonet on the one end, and on the other end is the start bayonet. I opted for a twist bayonet rather than the breech lock, because it was easier to engineer. This adapter was only supposed to be a prototype, because I haven't designed a latching mechanism yet. But when I tried it on the lens, it's a pretty tight friction fit, and the lens isn't about to fall off, so I might just leave it as it is. The micro four thirds end of the adapter just fits onto the camera like any other lens or adapter, and the finished result doesn't look too bad at all. I'll leave a thorough test of the lens for another video, when I'll compare it to a couple of other Helios 44 series lenses. 
but here are a few shots and clips that I have shot with it so far. With the lens wide open and shooting towards the light, the shots are quite low in contrast and a fair bit of correction needs to be done when processing them, but once done the results are pretty good. Not all shots lack contrast though, this shot of some moss had very little processing and it's definitely not lacking in contrast. I couldn't find the right subject and lighting conditions to explore the legendary swirly bokeh, and I suspect that it will be a lot less prominent when shooting on a Micro Four Thirds camera. Still, this shot has a nice soft, abstract look to it, with some big bokeh balls in the background. I like the shapes created by this tree, with its branches picked out by the side lighting of low hazy sun. As I mentioned, shooting into the light tends to lack contrast and the lens can also flare a lot, but for the right subject that could create some really atmospheric images. The lens definitely does give quite a vintage look to video clips, and I'm looking forward to shooting an entire video just using this lens. And it looks like I was wrong, the swirly bokeh does show up with the two times crop of a Micro Four Thirds camera. If you look at the top right hand corner, the bokeh balls are decidedly oval in shape. And we have a bit more crazy bokeh, in this clip are some teasel heads with side lighting from the early morning sun. I think that will do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more vintage stuff and repairs coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.